Uh, you can't bring food into the theater. Huh? Oh, no, I'm not. I, I bought it over there with that food. No, you didn't. How do you know that? Because we don't serve spaghetti, and I just watched you walk in with it. You call my bluff, sir. I shall dispose of this post haste. A moment, please. So you've disposed of your constructor and smelter spaghetti, and you're ready for the next cleanup. Well, stay tuned for assembler and foundry best practices right here on RuneStone Gaming's Tips and Tricks. Welcome to the Longhouse. I'm RuneStone Gaming, and once again, we're talking about people's favorite carb, spaghetti. Hit him with a disclaimer. These best practices are not for everyone. There are many different ways to approach this game. I think each individual's approach to both problem solving and creativity is what makes this game so great. One of the greatest challenges in this game are the machines. Each machine provides us with opportunities to solve unique challenges. This is part two of a three-part episode, and in this part, I will cover what more seasoned pioneers are dealing with, assemblers and boundaries. Assemblers are one of the machines from early and mid game. The primary difference between assemblers and a constructor is that an assembler requires two products to function. It also takes up a little bit more room than a constructor and cannot be placed side by side while simultaneously matching conveyor wall holes. Begin by ensuring you have the room to place a series of assemblers. For this build, you would need seven by four space for each quad set of assemblers. The reason for the quad set is because by placing them this way, you've ensured the assemblers are matching conveyor wall holes and will also help with future placements of the mergers and the splitters. By placing your assemblers input at the edge of the tile with the input facing your direction. Good news, the assemblers should line up very nicely with the edge of the tile as opposed to the other machines. Make sure you're very careful when placing the assemblers. When placing the assemblers in a series, you should see a space in between. Do not place the assemblers side by side. It's best practice to place the inputs and outputs matching conveyor wall holes. Continue this by placing another assembler on the opposite side with inputs facing each other in the same manner as before, making sure to place on the edge. Next. It's time to take care of the inputs. Begin by placing splitters three high in the middle between the two assemblers, making sure the output from the splitters is facing the input of the assemblers. Then place splitters four high in the same manner, adjacent to the three high splitter, once again making sure it aligns with the input of the machine. Then remove the first two splitters on the first three high splitter set. And then the first three splitters on the four high set. Continue this with the next set of assemblers, then connect all your splitters with the appropriate belt. Next, place a lift from the machine to the splitter. If you place it from splitter to machine, it will not work. Next are the outputs. To begin, place three walls, then a foundation above. Use the stackable conveyor pole to climb to the top of the foundation. Place a merger in the middle of the foundation, making sure to match the outputs of the machine below. This will be pretty simple if you've lined up your assemblers. You should know where the center output of your machine lays because of assembler placement best practice. The final step for the output is to place a belt between the lift and the merger. The height that you should raise each lift is eight bumps. Feel free to add power as we did before in part one or do it in your own unique way. And that's it, off to foundries. Foundries are another one of the early mid game machines that you acquire. As with assemblers, they have similar problems and solutions. Begin by ensuring you have room to place a series of foundries. For this build, you will need five by four space for each quad set of foundries. The reason for the quad set is because by placing them this way, you've ensured foundries are matching conveyor wall holes and also help with future placements of mergers and splitters. Next, Place your foundry's input at the edge of the tile with the input facing your direction. Continue this by placing another foundry on the opposite side, with both inputs facing each other in the same manner as before, making sure to place on the edge. There should be a slight piece just reaching right over the edge. Next, it's time for the inputs. 
Begin by placing splitters three high in the middle between the two foundries first input and place splitters four high in the middle between the second input. Then, similar to the assembler, place a lift from the machine to the splitter, ensuring that you're placing from the machine to the splitter and not the splitter to the machine. Next, outputs. To begin, place three mergers on the top of the splitter you have originally placed for the first input. Then delete the first two mergers you placed. Then place two mergers on top of the splitters you placed for the second input. Then delete the first merger you placed. Next, place a conveyor lift on the output of the foundries and raise the lift equidistant to where the merger has been placed. This will be six ticks up. The final step for the output is to place an appropriate belt between the lift and the merger. Then run the belts to the back the way that they came. The last piece is power. Similar to the assemblers, feel free to add power as we did in part one of this episode or do it in your own unique way. And that's it. You've unspaghettified your assemblers and foundries. Well, that wraps up part two of three part episode. Please hop into the discord and send me a PM if you tried any of these builds. I love to hear from you guys. It means so much to me. Stay tuned for the next part of this episode where we talk about refineries and manufacturers. As a reminder, I stream on Twitch from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. MST, Tuesday through Friday. I would love to see you come in there where we talk about this and many other builds. Stay safe, cheers. See you all in the next part of this episode right here in the Longhouse.